I don't know how many of you have seen this. It's been going around for a little while. Um, it's called A Catholic Guide to Ashes. Um, and this is this is a real risk on my part because I realize this is visual and I've got to try and explain it to you. I can't just sit there and go, and look at this one. Back there, you all got it. So these are <clears throat> just some of the different types of ashes, ash patterns that people coming to Ash Wednesday Mass might end up seeing or even receiving. The first one, it's a, an almost perfect ash, just very straight. It looks like very even lines. And of course, that one's called first in line. <laughs> um, then later on, you have one that's just kind of a, a, of a round smear, and that's called the blob. Uh, there's one called the hasty, which is just kind of a quick line across there. Uh, there's one that's kind of a, it's not really a cross, maybe as much of an X of some sort. That's called the Rorschach. Uh, this one, this one I love. It's a really, really big ash smear. And that's called Father's Revenge. <laughs> um, you have a very tiny little one called the Mini. Um, you have one that's a very nice round dot called the Hindu. Um, and my favorite out of all of these, it's a very, very light, you know, you can hardly see it at all. And that one they call load toner. <laughs> now some might object and say, this is Ash Wednesday. Why are you starting off with all this jocularity? Well, I really wasn't trying to start off with jocularity as much as, again, we go into Ash Wednesday and we so very often focus on the little things, the unimportant things. For so many, the season of Lent is still about this is the time when you got to give something up. And, <clears throat> you know, then we, in our minds, we quibble or we rationalize, well, how much do I have to do? What constitutes half a meal? Um, you know, if I can't eat meat, you know, does McDonald's hamburger still count? No. Stop that. <laughs> but we get so very caught up in the little things. What we call it, the word is minutia. Little unimportant things that basically serve to distract us, to allow us to put our focus there so we don't have to focus on the big things or what really matters. During Lent, when we focus on minutia, we give ourselves the sense that, well, look at how I'm doing something. Looking how, look at how I'm becoming holy somehow by doing this. But it's just an illusion that I create for myself. You know, Jesus says in the gospel, you know, do not perform religious acts to impress others. Well, how much do we do religious acts just to impress ourselves. Say, wow, okay. I'm being holy. When we focus on the minutiae, it's like we are treading water when we should be swimming. 
And the reason that I bring this up, a quote from one of my favorite contemporary spiritual writers, he's a, an Irish Dominican. He said, the gospel, the gospel message is so disconcerting to our normal frame of mind, we Christians have learned to distract ourselves with minutia while we dismiss the revolutionary import of Christ's words. We can so easily get so caught up in the minutia, the stuff that doesn't really matter. And we very often do it because the gospel has such a deep challenge to us that we don't want to face that. Now we have Lent. St. Paul tells us, now is a very acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the chance that we are offered to really take things seriously. To take an honest look at our lives. To accept that, okay, I'm, I'm trying, but I am not really becoming the person that God wants me to be. And I have hitted myself, I have distracted myself. As a way of not confronting it. You know, the last week and a half, we have been reminded, sadly, of how destructive it can be when we try to live two different lives when we, as they say, try to have our feet in two different worlds. And Lent this year, I think, is, is that time, that day of salvation. How many of us are I don't necessarily want to say living double lives. But how many of us have found it easy to not face some of the realities about us that we would rather not face? To downplay them. A number of times in confession that someone says not I was drunk and out of control but rather well I may have had a little bit too much to drink every now and then it's not facing to look at what it is that we are trying to hide Relationships that we shouldn't be in. Habits that we know are not bringing out the best in me. But I don't want to let go of it. I don't want to give it up. Now is a very acceptable time. Now is the time for us to face the unfaceable, admit the unmittable, unrationalize 
that which we have rationalized. Acknowledging our secrets, our double lives. There's an old expression, we are as sick as our secrets. We say we turn to God, we say we are opening our hearts, but that part of us that we hold back, that we try to keep in the shadows, that we hope and pray, nobody finds out about. That part of us that is unwilling or is hesitant to ask God for help, We are as sick as our secrets. God asks us, we heard it in the prophet Joel, return to me with your whole heart. Lent is a call to strive to be wholehearted, not to have a heart where we keep a hole in the middle of it. So it's not about what kind of ashes did I get? It's not about how many prayers am I supposed to say? It's not about, wow, I'm having such a good Lent because I went to stations. It's returned to me, Jesus says, to all of us with our whole hearts. Now is a very acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation.